Hey everybody, welcome back to Stone Mountain Adventures. We are cooking today. It's something I haven't done in a little bit. I wanted to cook up something delicious for you. Today we're doing a little bit of a keto cook. Carnivore enthusiasts wouldn't necessarily agree that this would be carnivore. Um, so we're going to stick more to the ketovore-ish style of cooking. What we're going to be cooking today is a poor man's set of brisket burn-ins or chuck roast burn-ins or burn-ins period, beef burn-ins, whatever you want to call it. We're going to be smoking up this two and a half pound chuck roast. We're going to season it up with some killer hogs, AP rub. Um, now this is where it kind of goes off the rails for carnivore. Killer hogs has soybean oil in their rub. Why? I don't know. But if you don't want to use this and you want to make it as carnivore or keto as possible, you can go ahead and make something very similar to this. Just do, I would do like equal parts, salt, pepper, maybe a little bit of garlic and onion powder. That would be more keto. Or if you just want to stick straight carnivore, you could just do a salt rub. Um, salt brine with the smoke, still going to be delicious, but I'm feeling a little keto ish today. So we're going to be doing some Killer Hogs AP rub. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and get this chuck roast seasoned up. Now just like I would a pork shoulder or a brisket or anything like that, we're going to be using a binder. Now I'm just using straight French's yellow mustard. Um, if you've watched barbecue a long time, you've been around barbecue a long time, you know that when you use this you don't taste the mustard. So if you say, I don't like the taste of mustard, don't worry, it's going to cook out. This literally is only here to help this rub stick to this meat. Now I'm not trimming this chuck roast, I'm not doing anything special to it. We're just going to get it seasoned up and throw it on the pit. Once we have that mustard slathered all over the chuck roast, we're just going to take it and we're just going to dust it with, it, with our seasoning. Now this is a large piece of meat, so don't be afraid to season it up. Get all your edges. Now in this Killer Hogs rub, they do have onion powder, garlic powder, they say salt spices, obviously salt. Um, and as far as the nutrition facts on it, there is zero sugar in this and zero calories. All right, now that our chuck roast is all seasoned up, we're gonna go ahead and go get the Weber kettle fired up. We're gonna be using the slow and sear today. And then we're gonna be chopping it up into chunks and making our burn-ins. All right guys, so I've got our, uh, we're just using the Weber briquettes that I've used a lot here lately. But I've got the slow and sear completely full. Um, I've left a little bit of a space over here on the left so that when I get my coals lit, I can dump them in over there. To light our coals today, we're gonna be using these little uh, Jealous Devil Boom fire starters. Saw these at Tractor Supply the other day and they just looked cool, so I got them. Used them the other day to do a quick cook and these things burn a very long time. So honestly, for something like this, it's probably a little bit of overkill. You could probably just use a wax briquette or something like that that would do a little bit better. These things are gonna last a long time and uh, it's definitely gonna get these few little coals that we're trying to light up lit pretty good. In our charcoal basket, we've just got about, I don't know, 10 briquettes. We're gonna get those started, dump them in over here on the left side and get this pit fired up. Hey guys, while we're waiting on the pit to come up to temperature and to get this chuck roast on, I want to say thank you to Nakano Knives for sending me this Santoku uh, chef's knife. They sent this to me about a month ago. I just haven't had time to do a video on it yet. We're going to be using it today to chop up our brisket, or well, our chuck roast. And um, this thing out of the box is super sharp, super dangerous. It has, it features a half tank and uh, it's pretty nice. Made in Japan. I don't think that um, you would need any other knife. So if you want to get you one, go check out the description below. This link right here will uh, send you there and let them know that I sent you. And then there'll be a discount code down in the description also if you want to pick up one for yourself, all right? All right, guys, so now that our Weber kettle is coming up to camp, you see the smoke rolling off of it now. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw some wood chips on here. I'm gonna be using pecan chips today and I'm not going to be soaking them in water first. using about a cup and a half of chips. Get it started over here. 
Just dump them and go. Now, as y'all know, the slow and sear, it's indirect cooking, it's indirect smoking, it can do all kinds of things. We're going to go ahead and get our chuck roast set over here on the um, cool side away from the fire. Those coals are going to burn slow, smoke your meat, it's going to be delicious. And that's all we're going to do. See, we've got our coals lit over here on the left. It's going to burn across and it's going to make this chuck roast ever so delicious. All right, so the chuck roast has been on the Weber kettle for about two hours. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it, see what it's doing, see if that bark is setting in, and uh, decide if we're going to go ahead and start spritzing. If I do, I'm going to be using apple cider vinegar today. Um, again, not everybody's going to like doing that. It keeps the meat moist, keeps everything nice and um, able to accept that smoke. Smoke likes to stick to cold, wet meat, so if you keep your meat wet throughout the cook, it gets more smoke on it. So let's take a look at it. So we're getting a great color. You can see, I'll try to hide the sun here so we can get a good picture. It's trying to get that nice mahogany color around the edges. It's still a little bit, you can see the, the seasoning starts still coming off. So your bark hasn't necessarily set. Uh, so I'm gonna just go ahead and flip it for right now. And again, you can see color is looking good. We're getting nice mahogany over here. So we're just gonna let this ride another couple hours probably. Uh, still checking it to see if it's starting to dry out. If it does, like I said, we'll spritz it with some apple cider vinegar. All right, guys, we're four hours in. Um, I, I got this thing put on at like 2.30. It's about 6.15 now. So we're about four hours in. Let's take a look at it. It's looking pretty good. So we're definitely getting that great color. We've got a lot of juice on this thing from that fat that's rendering out. So we're going to go ahead and keep it. I haven't spritzed it. I haven't sprayed it. We've still got plenty of coals left. We're going to let it go just a little bit longer and then we're going to pull it off and we're going to wrap it. Alright guys, so we're five hours into this cook. Our chuck roast has come up to about 165, 170 degrees. We're going to go ahead and get it cut up and we're going to put it back in a pan, cover it with foil, throw it back on the smoker, let it render down as nice and tender as we can get it. As you can see, the color is amazing. We've got a great mahogany, uh, red color, smoky, it's juicy. We're gonna cut it into chunks. About one inch cubes is what we're gonna do. We're gonna be using this Nakano uh, chef's knife that they sent to me. And we're just gonna cut it into chunks. Look at that smoke ring on there. These are gonna be delicious. So then we're just gonna take it and just do some chunks. Now this is cooked, so let's go ahead and try it. That's smoky, salty, real savory. That AP rub from Killer Hogs is doing the trick. So there's what you have once you get it cut up. You see all that smoke ring and everything. So here's where we're gonna get a little bit off the rails for the carnivore folks. We're gonna take a little bit of apple cider vinegar just a splash of it, just to put a little bit of moisture in the pan so that it'll steam and it'll render that meat and that fat down even more. We're gonna take a little bit more of our killer hogs just so we try to get as much bark and as much flavor as we can. And then we're gonna do some of this sugar-free, uh, this is G. Hughes Smokehouse uh, Sugar-Free Barbecue Sauce. This is their original. We're just going to drizzle that all over the top. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this rolled butter. And we're just going to break it up in there to let it melt down. And I think Paula Dean said it best when she said butter makes it better. 
So now once we got everything in here, we're just going to give it a good mix. You're going to get that seasoning, that sauce on every single piece. And then we're just going to take some aluminum foil. And we're going to wrap this thing up as tight as we can. We're going to get this put back out on the Weber kettle. And we're going to let this go until those chunks of meat are as tender and juicy as you can think of. I mean, you want to be able to just put a skewer through it, pull it straight out. It should go through there like soft butter. So let's go ahead and get it out on the pit. We'll see y'all back whenever we're eating them. All right, guys, we're done. Just pulled these off of the Weber kettle. We've had them wrapped for about an hour and a half, two hours. Didn't want to go too long because it's getting late. Overall, this is about a nine hour cook. Sorry. Overall, this is about a seven and a half to eight hour cook. And I think these are going to be delicious. Let's go ahead and bend them out. Be careful with the steam. It's really hot. But let's take a look at these things. We want to give them a mix. Get all that juice, get everything covered up with that. Uh, barbecue sauce and that butter. Now because that barbecue sauce doesn't have any sugar in it and nothing really that we were using had sugar in it, um, you don't get that nice car caramelly glaze, hey, however you want to say it, the sticky glaze. But these things, they're tender. Let's go ahead and give one a bite. Super hot. That sauce is really good. It, the, the barbecue sauce has a really tomato based taste to it. Um, I'm assuming that's what it's probably mostly made of. It's gonna be hot. Smoky, tender, salty. I can taste a little bit of garlic. That apple cider vinegar has kind of penetrated that meat a little bit. I can kind of give you that little tang, that little twang to it. Mm. Those little fatty bits have rendered really well. I mean, this is a great cook. I really enjoy making it. It's delicious. If you're trying to watch your carbs, your sugars, but you love barbecue and you really don't want to compromise that those fun recipes that you've been used to doing maybe give this a try like I said no sugars there's a little bit of stuff in the in the rub that some hardcore carnivore folks may disagree with but like I said this is more of a keto style barbecue cook no sugars barely any carbs I think there's two grams of carbs uh, in the barbecue sauce not a lot it's not going to hurt, hurt you that bad you're going to enjoy it. You're going to love your food that you eat, and it's going to make you want to cook some more. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Y'all stick with me. We'll see what we can do. I appreciate you for watching. Be sure to check out uh, Nakano Knives, the link down below, and you, you can use my discount code to save you a little bit of money. Till next time, y'all be good. We'll see you later. Thanks, guys. God bless.